Hey guys, this is Jordan, aka Mary Helsing, and I'm back with a brand new video. Now, today I'm gonna do a Photoshop tutorial project where I show you how I would normally use Photoshop in order to create gorgeous looking pictures. Now, it doesn't have to be like a big giant project where you have to draw something gorgeous and you have to put an amount of work into it. It's mostly going to be how I use the basic tools on Photoshop and I'm going to like walk you through them and show you how to do it. So, let's get started. So in order to get started, you have to be sure to have a drawing and be able to scan it or just take a picture of it with your iPhone and import it into your computer. Now, the picture that I have here is a picture of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, except I drew her in historically accurate 1700s dress wear because I wanted to take a more different approach to the character. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to lock myself into Photoshop and be able to set myself a new project. Project where I colored the character in with um, designs and patterns and all the kind of stuff so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click on new and we gotta switch the preset to photo and then we're gonna change the size to portrait 8 by 10 also just to give it more space I'm gonna add the inches to 8.5 to the width of the inches of this new project then click OK now although it might look a little small be sure to zoom it in to make it fit into the screen and so now I'm gonna just position that and I'm gonna like stretch it out to give it enough room so I can do the work and enough space to like see that and just position it a little like that and so there now I'm going to like import the picture of Belle, or as I like to say, 17th century Belle. I just called her that because I just want to sound elegant and cool. So then we're going to drag the picture of Belle in and place it in the project. So you might notice there is like an X in front of her. So in order to confirm the placement, you have to like um, just maybe click this button right here right about here and which says place the file so we'll click place and there it is it's right there so now that we got the picture of the character in Photoshop what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be touching it up and editing it so here we go so what we're gonna be doing first is we're gonna click the eraser button because we are gonna be erasing out the background of the picture so the character stands out. So I'm just gonna like erase out the unwanted background, What I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna like erase it out because I took this picture with my iPhone, but I'm just gonna like take my time and just like clear out this unwanted background because I'm going to put a background right behind that. And if you find that a little too slow, you could always use the magic wand button because it can be used as a tool to speed up your work. Next, I'm going to clean up the rough edges in the drawing to make this into vector art. Now, that means that there are well-defined lines and geometric shapes that you can fill in with the click of a button. So here we go. Now, now you see, like, I'm just erasing it very carefully, and you notice that I'm not erasing out Belle's face. And it's also very easy to do, you know? It's like, but you have to be sure to, like, take your time with this. Like, you don't want to, like, go too fast. Like, because if you go way too fast, like, you might, like, mess up the whole picture. So it's always good to, like, slow down, take your time, and maybe, like, listen to some music. I always like to listen to music when I work on my projects. So we're going to deselect. Now you notice there's little tiny details that I want to, like, uh, erase some parts out. Now, if you're having some difficulty with that, it's always good to zoom in onto the picture even further to get right into the nooks and crannies because that makes it even if like for some Photoshop artists it's usually very difficult but if you use that little technique I, I assure you it's gonna like uh, be even better because you can like get rid of those little unwanted boo-boos right here in the picture like you see how I'm doing that right here 
and you, you see how I'm getting rid of that kind of stuff. And it makes it look like a clean version of animation. So I'm gonna like erase that stuff out here. And you know, um, a lot of people at animation studios like Disney usually tend to do that a lot for most of the time. Usually they would start out with storyboards and then later rough sketches and then they like clean up the little um, boo-boos and erase markers just to like get rid of it. Now just so you know, if you want to like do a little quicker version of getting rid of those boo-boos, you can always use either tools like the magic wand button or the marquee tool or the lasso tool or even the magnetic lasso tool because these types of tools will make it easier for you to like um like uh, edit your picture uh and give it a lot more of a cleaner refined um appeal to your picture and one more thing about the eraser tool is whether you're at any part of the picture it's always good to shrink down the eraser tool just to get into the small details or you can just size up your eraser tool to get into the bigger background parts like what I'm doing right now. This also applies to the paint tools or any other tool you use on Photoshop. Next we're going to try out the polygonal tool and what this does is you click on any part of the picture and you drag it just to get rid of, of any unwanted parts of the picture and also just to clean up and erase any parts you don't want in your picture. Basically to put it more accurately, the lasso tool is meant to draw out the selections in your picture and you can either erase or color it out and all you do is you basically just click it and wrap it around and and just delete anything you want in a way it's almost like mountain climbing for Photoshop so now we're gonna do it again I'm gonna show you how to do it what you do is hang on we okay hey here, here we go now we click drag it down drag it to there and then you wrap it around click and there you go it's gone because all you did was you wrapped it around and pick up from where you left off now if you kinda like uh, don't want to do that you could always use the magic uh, wand tool or you can also try the magnetic lasso tool and what that does is you can like uh, click anywhere you want in the picture as long as it sticks to the outside of the character. In a way it almost works like a magnet. So it kind of like it, you drag it and you click it and then you delete it and it's gone. Just like that. Very easy. So now that you're done erasing, now it's time to color in the character. So let's click the paint bucket right here and what this is going to do is we're going to start zooming in and coloring in the parts of your character. Now what I always do first is I color in the picture white because I want to clean up any other like uh, boo-boos that are on the picture and also it's a way to like try to clean up everything and as you can see I'm clicking everywhere in the picture white because I want to like uh, keep my picture all cleaned up and ready for me to like uh, throw in all types of rainbow colors. So in a way, it's almost kind of like the prologue or the preset to starting to color in. And also another thing I like to do is I always try to color in the lines black just to make sure that I stay within the lines. So as you can see, I'm just zooming in just a little bit and I'm using my brush tool 
because I'm gonna like uh, brush out any other like little boo-boos like just to clean them out just very gentle right here like you see like I'm trying to like get rid of that just to make sure the lines are smooth and clean enough for me to start coloring them in and be sure to take your time with it as long as you like Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be coloring in the Belle character, but before we're going to do that, we're going to start a new layer. Now the reason why I'm going to like use a new layer is I'm going to bring in some pictures of Belle's two different dresses from the movie Beauty and the Beast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the two colors of the dresses together to create an original dress. So I'm going to pick out a picture of Belle's peasant dress from earlier in the movie and I'm going to place the file right here and the picture of her in her peasant dress is officially in the project but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to like bring in her other dress so I'm going to turn off this layer now this doesn't delete the layer because like we know it's still there and we're going to click a new layer we're going to click OK and for this layer, we're going to put in Belle's evening dress from later in the movie when she dances with the beast. So we're going to place that file here. And the reason why we're going to do that is I'm going to color in my character with two of the colors from both her dresses. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the color picker, drag it here, and then we're going to pick out the yellow color from her yellow dress. So, and it could be like a... A darker shading but I'm more of going for like a more of a lighter gold shading if you know what I'm saying so maybe I'll look around for here maybe it's a little I think this is all right well, I don't know maybe I'll click OK we'll see what happens now you can see that the yellow is in the color picker so I'm gonna turn the layer off and then I'm gonna turn the other layer on so I can find a bluish uh, color so I'm gonna click back to the color picker and I'm gonna pick wherever in the picture and drag it around to like give it a lighter hue so I'm gonna click OK and maybe a, okay I'm gonna click OK anyway so the color picker is actually meant to be a feature that helps you pick out any color that is anywhere in the picture so I'm gonna click on the paint bucket and this allows you to zoom in and color in um, the places on my character. So I'm gonna like color in her dress first. 
Now you saw that I cleaned everything out by using a uh, white paint, but right now I'm gonna like work the magic and color in her dress blue and the inside of her dress yellow. So see that? I clicked on a part of the picture and I colored it in blue. So as you can see, it almost kind of feels like a coloring book because you can click anywhere you want in your picture and change it to the different color you want it to be. So it's really fun to do as long as you click around and change it to the color you want. So the paint bucket tool is not only an easy way to color in your picture, but it's also a fun way for you to get creative. Now once you're done coloring in the dresses, what we're going to do next is we're going to look for elegant patterns to overlay the patches. So before that, we're going to delete these layers of the two dresses, like clear them out so we can make a new layer. Well, to be put it more accurately, we're going to make two layers so we can find um, two patterns, one for the outside of the dress and the other for the inside of the dress. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find two different patterns and we're going to overlay it to give the dress a sort of a magical feeling, but we're also going to give it a reason for the details to pop out. You know, we're going to like make it pop. Like you can see the details. Like right here, I'm going to like try to look for like maybe a good um, pattern for the outside or well, well, actually, I'm going to be looking for a pattern for the inside, so I'm going to look around, like, for example, right around here, like this picture right here, I'm going to click it right here. I think this picture would be a good example to be for the inside of the dress. So I already placed it, so now we're going to look for another pattern for the exterior of the dress. So as you can see, the first layer is right here, for example but we're gonna click back to the desktop to find a good um, pattern for the details of the outside of the dress. So I'm gonna look around. Let's try this one, for example. Now this almost kind of looks like Beauty and the Beast theme because it has the roses, but it looks a little dark, so we're not gonna use that. So maybe this one. Now this one, it shows a lot more light and a lot more patterns. So I'm gonna like use that for the outside of the dress. So I dragged it in, place it, and now we have two of our patterns for the dress. But what I'm gonna show you here is right here, this is gonna be for the interior of the dress, whereas the other is gonna be for the exterior of the dress. So I'm gonna turn that off, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna like try to scale it you know, I'm going to like change the size, so I'm going to click around here, click the picture, see how I'm moving it up and down, but I'm going to click it, I'm going to scale it to the right size, like just move it to the middle, and you see how I, got, I can scale it down and shrink it or enlarge it, but I'm going to scale it down, so I'm going to place it, and then what you do is I'm going to change it to black and white. Now you see what I'm doing here? Because black and white is going to make everything look like it's a still from The Wizard of Oz. But unless if you merge the layers, it's only the one layer that is black and white. So because of that, I'm going to 
lower the opacity so you can see the outline of the dress. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase out the patterns outside of the dress. So I'm going to click at the magic wand tool, click here, and I'm going to take out the eraser tool. And I'm going to erase out the patterns that are not in the dress because I want to make sure to stay within the lines. You see how I'm erasing everything out? Like, like you see, like I'm trying to get rid of it because I want to make sure the pattern is inside the dress. So I click back, click the wand tool on the other side, and use the eraser tool and erase it out just like that. You see that? Like it's getting rid of it all right here. Then we're going to click, take the magic wand tool, and we're going to click a different part right here on our hair. Click back to the back, black and white, and then erase that part out. Now we're going to deselect, and then we're going to like zoom in to just erase out the patterns that are uh, on any other part that's not on the dress. And you see how I'm erasing it. So I'm going to do the same with the other parts of the dress right here. Sometimes it's always good to use the magic wand tool or the lasso tool just to like be sure to like uh, trace everything and erase everything out. Once you're all done with tracing everything out and erasing everything out, now it's time to overlay. So we're going to heighten the opacity and switch over to overlay. And as you can see, the dress looks like a royal blue. Like you can definitely see the details that are popping out. So I'm going to leave the opacity as it is because I just want to make it look regal. So now that that part's done, I'm going to work on the other pattern and work on the inside of the dress. Another great tool for erasing stuff out is that you could always use the rectangle tool because what you do is you click on anywhere in your picture and you drag it and place it and you delete it anywhere you want. Simple as that. So in a way, it basically works like the magic wand tool or the lasso tool because it gives you the freedom to click anywhere in the picture, whether you can delete or clean out or paint anywhere in your picture, and it saves you enough time. Now while I'm at it, I'm also going to color in Belle's face, but at the same time, I'm going to put in some layers of color over Belle's face, such as if I want to put some highlights on the eyes or put some shadows in the hair, or even do some makeup and try overlaying it. This is going to give the, um, the, the face of Belle a lot more color, but also a lot more detail. But I'm also going to add in lots of details that are going to make 
the the character's face really pop. It feels more like that she is a living, breathing character. Next what we're going to do is we're going to work on the gemstones and we're going to like scale them down so we're going to place it here and then we're going to use the magic wand and then click it, erase that out and just like um, use the eraser to like uh, touch up some of the edges, just clear up some of the rough edges and then we're going to like click on the gemstone image and then we're going to shrink it down like that to size. Like we're going to make it small enough so we put it on her necklace. See that? We're going to shrink it down just a tiny bit just to make sure it fits. We're going to move it over here, shrink it down just a little bit more, and move it right here. And you see it kind of fits just a little bit and apply. There you go. Next we're going to like uh, choose an overlay effect, but what we're going to choose instead is multiply because that darkens the image and you see the details right here. And also, I'm going to use also the eraser to just clean up the edges so to make sure that it doesn't stay, it doesn't go outside the lines. So it looks all clean and it looks like she's wearing the necklace. But also we're going to like duplicate that same gemstone and we're going to move it up into the place where the earring is. And you could do that many times by duplicating the layer and just make sure it fits within the lines. If you ever want to distort your image, it's always good to use the transform tool. Now what this does is it allows you to twist, skewer, and distort your image into the right shape you want it to be. This can actually help in case if you want to like make sure it stays in the lines. So I'm going to apply the transformation and it looks like it's another gem in her hairpiece. Now that we're done with the gems, now we're going to work on the lace design. 
So what I got here is a lovely picture of a rose pattern and I'm going to drag that in here and place it in. And what we're going to do is I'm going to like like put the rose pattern on the laces of the dress. So I placed it in. Now what I'm going to do is first I'm going to like move it up to the front, like the front of the picture because that's when I get started. Then I move it up. And then I'm going to like like size it up a little bit. Put it up. Okay, hang on. Let me go down a little. Place it here. Like, okay, I'm moving it up. Yeah, I'm just working on it. And then you size it up a little bit. And then you place it. And then I'm going to like lower the opacity a little bit so I'll see where I'm going to trace it. You know, like do a vector art. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to shrink it just a tiny bit and I'm going to be using the transform tool to try to make it look like you see the details in the lace patterns of the dress. So I just click the transform and you see how I'm just stretching out just a little bit. Just so you know, I just don't want to make it too stretchy. I just want you to see it. So I'm going to place that. And while that looks all right, I'm going to use the eraser tool. And I'm just going to like erase out to make sure I stay within the lines. Now you kind of see how I'm taking my time here. Yep, I have all the time in the world. Now once you're done erasing, what we're going to do is we're going to do the overlay effect and we're going to pick a different style so you can see the details. Now I might choose soft light, but when you look at it, you don't quite see the details. So I'm going to use color burn and it almost looks like you can definitely see the details. I mean, it looks kind of brilliant. And so then I'm going to heighten the opacity so you can definitely see it. You know, you see the stitching. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the lace parts of the dress. Now that you're done coloring in your character, now it's time to find the right background. Now the background I chose was a picture of the Chatsworth house from England and I chose it because it seems appropriate for the style of the picture and because it reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that, drag it into the project, now you see it there. Then I'm going to click on it, place it, and then I'm going to drag the layer down to the back of the character. So to make sure that Belle is in front of the background. And there she is. And then I'm going to like scale it and try to make the background bigger. So, so it looks like that she's inside the room. So I'm going to scale that. Okay, hang on. Yeah, and I'm also going to make it look like she's on the floor. I don't want to make it look like this. She's levitating. That'd be weird. So, place it. Hang on. Okay. Like, it's very elegant, don't you think? Hang on. Okay, a little. 
Okay, now it looks like we can place it here, and it looks like she's in the ballroom. Now next we're gonna change the background to make it more of like an artistic background. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna click on filter, go to artistic, and we're gonna click any of the options that are gonna like change the style of your picture. And this place is where you can like take like an ordinary background and you make it into something like a painting. And there are many options you could choose from. You could choose watercolor or paint dabs or smudge stick or palette knife, like, and it changes the style of your picture. So say like if I click rough pastels, the image looks dark, or paint dabs, the image looks a little brighter. Or if I click film grain, you can see it looks really bright and vivid. But I'm going to choose rough pastels to make it look more authentic, like this is an actual painting from the Rococo period. And you could definitely see the details right in the staircase. So then I'm going to enhance the stroke detail just a little bit. Then that looks nice. Then I'm going to click OK. And it looks like she stepped right out of a fairy tale. But just to brighten up the room a little bit, I'm gonna put a layer. And then I'm gonna use a gradient background by using yellow and black combined together. So I just click OK and I'm gonna like, hang on, change the other color to black. But I'm also going to deepen the yellow color and click OK. Then I'm going to change it to Gradient Tool. And I'm picking this style here. Background and drag. And it looks like it's a different background. But I'm going to click Overlay. And you see how brilliantly yellow. But I'm going to choose Soft Light. Lower the Opacity. And it kind of looks like the room looks warm and welcoming. So I'm going to try to bring in that authenticity of the castle. And she looks like she's just coming down the stairs. Okay, I'm just going to hide the passage a little bit, but it looks good. And hang on, I'm just going to bring it down and drag it up. Just like give the background a little bit of shine, you know, just to make it look a little bit more magical, you know, just make it pop. All right, apply transformation and it looks good. And the final touch we're gonna do is we're gonna add in shadows to Belle's character. This is the finishing touch. So I'm clicking the paint tool, enlarge it a little, and then I stroke it across. Now it might look like it's black, but once you lower the opacity and click overlay, and the shadow looks almost realistic. You know, like she looks like she's in the room. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Bring out some shadows in her hair and also her face and also also on her dress.
So now that everything is all finished, now it's time to save it as an image file. So I'm going to click File, Save As, and we're going to set the image format to JPEG. You could save it as a PNG file or a TIFF file, but I'm going to be saving it as a JPEG. So I'm saving it to the desktop, and then I'm going to click Save Now, and then I'm going to leave the quality of the picture at maximum because that's when you really see the details pop. Right, so I'm clicking maximum, click OK, and it's done. You saved it to a desktop. So now I'm going to exit out of Photoshop so you can get to see the final product. And here it is. So this is my new project called Rococo Bell. And this is my take on the Beauty and the Beast story, except I want to put Belle in a Rococo looking fashion, which is like a certain style in the 1700s. And I put so much detail into her dress and also her face, because in a way, I use Photoshop to create my own characters, you know, to create my own type of art. If you're curious to see more of my Photoshop work, be sure to check it out on my Instagram at artwitch20, where I do Harry Potter fan art and original takes on famous stories. You can also check out my business website at www.jvrproductions.work where I put up not just my Photoshop creations, but also my paintings and my logo designs. So be sure to check both of them out. They're really cool websites to look at. And also, if you really enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Mary Helsing for more content in the future. So until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.